Hey guys, I'm Stephanie and this is Steph Stowe and today we're going to be making a great fall vegetable that will turn into a wonderful, wonderful souffle and it is this little gem right here, butternut squash. Now I know this looks a little intimidating for a lot of people because you're like, how do I cook it? What do I do with it? It's rock hard. How do I fix it? We're going to answer all those questions today and make us a great butternut squash souffle. So let's get started. All right, as I stated earlier, um, butternut squash is um, sometimes just a little intimidating to cook. Just because it's so big, you wonder what in the world do I do with this and how do I get inside of it to get to that goodness that's inside. Um, butternut squash is very good for you. It's got a lot of fiber in it, lots of vitamins, and it's really, really just delicious. You can have it lots of ways, roasted, souffles, just sliced in half, a little bit of honey and some nuts and brown sugar, delish. But what we're gonna do today is a souffle, and the easiest way that I have found to cook these is in the Instapot. Now, with this method, my butternut squash here fits inside my, my um, Instapot, so I don't have to cut it in half or anything because it is very difficult. So if you're trying to cut it in half and it doesn't fit, you need an extremely sharp knife so you don't um, cut yourself primarily because the skin is so hard, you're gonna have to press super hard to get it open. Now you can, if you have an electric knife, cut it down the middle. That's usually the way I do it if I have to cut it just for safety reasons. Or you can cook it in the microwave. Again, you kind of need to cut it in half to do that. And depending on the size of your microwave, you may have to cut, um, cook each half individually for about 10 minutes each until they're tender. Um, you can slice it lengthwise. So again, all these have to do with slicing methods and put it in the oven and roast it in about 350 for about 10, 20, 10 to 20 minutes, depending on the size of it until it's very tender on the inside. But in the Instapot, you don't have to do anything. As long as it'll fit inside the Instapot, you're good to go. And you can roast it and it will be so tender when we get finished, we can just kind of scoop it out with a spoon and very easily get to the inside flesh, just what we need for this souffle. So to get it started, I just put it in the Instapot. I don't have to put holes in it, don't have to do any of that. You do have to, when you're using the Instapot, though, put at least one cup of water. That's the minimum you have to have in here. And then I'm gonna lock my Instant Pot and I'm gonna go to pressure cook. I'm gonna cook it for eight minutes and you'll see it'll start counting up in just a minute. I'm going to have it on a ceiling setting in the back so I don't want it venting. I don't want the steam coming out. And you see it's starting to, so I want it sealing for eight minutes and then I'm gonna do a natural release, let the steam release naturally for 10 minutes after that. And then we'll come back and check and get ready to make our souffle. So let's let this thing do its thing and we'll be back in a few minutes. All right, our butternut squash has finished cooking and I actually give it, it's been 14 minutes on a natural release. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna press and there is no steam that's coming out and the pin has dropped in the back, so there's no pressure to it right now. Safe for me to, to open. It didn't act like it wanted to open. All right, put that steam back in there. And these little handles right here, these little inserts, if you didn't know, that's a perfect place for you to store your lid when um, you're using your Instapot. That's what they're designed for. So now I'm gonna go in there and pull out my butternut squash and we are going to proceed to cutting it and getting out all that wonderful butternut squash flesh. So here I go. Let's see if I'll move you to this side so you can see me better. There you go. All right, let me move this over and now I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna get my fork out and I'm gonna get my top. All right. And to place this out, cancel it and turn it off. Put this over here to the side. Actually, I'm gonna move this to the other side so we can see a little bit better. All right. Now I'm going to pick it up. 
take it out, take it my colander, just to get it out. And do it. Now we're going to give it just a minute to cool down. We're going to slice it open and get all that wonderful flesh out. Be back in just a minute. All right, so now I've given it just a few minutes for my butternut squash to cool. And I do kind of bring it out in a colander just in case I get extra water coming out of it. And so at this point, I'm going to go through and I'm going to start cutting it. Now, you may even have to use an extra pot holder. So I might just, because it's still just a tad warm. So I'm going to put a little pot holder on to grab it. And then I'm just going to start slicing away. And if you notice, this skin is coming off effortlessly right now. So, had we tried to do this before we cut it, you can see I'm just going straight through, this would not have been possible. I'm going to actually cut across just because I don't want such big pieces to have to maneuver. All right, so there's one piece. And again, this one is, I would say, three and a half pounds if I had to do a guesstimate on here. It is pretty big. Now, depending on the size, most of them that you will get will be a little bit smaller. I would say maybe like two and a half pounds will be a great size, but I just happen to go in for a big boy. Now, inside a butternut squash, <laughs> if you've never seen one, it kind of looks just like this. And this pulp, similar to like a pumpkin, slipped right on my hand. You can actually take these seeds out and roast them, and they're really quite good. So if that's something that you enjoy, like roasted pumpkin seeds, by all means, save these as well. Butternut squash seeds will have a similar taste and texture and you'll get that you know just that fall harvest goodness that you think of with roasted seeds like that i'm not sure where that trend started but you know if you kind of think about it it shows us that there's so much more that we can enjoy without wasting things so and make a fun activity to do with your family. All right, and this one had the majority of the seeds. So I'm just taking a spoon and going a little bit into the flesh. As you can see, and again, it's kind of hot. I'll move this over. So I'm just going a little bit into the flesh. And it's so soft as I'm holding it, the skin is coming completely off. And just scraping and it's just gonna create this little cavity right there. Now, if you were roasting this to eat, this is where you would stuff all your goodness. Maybe if you had some um, um, brown sugar or pecans or nuts or something like that, you could stuff it in there and it'd be just yummy. All right, now let's get ready and peel it. All right, now to finish cutting up our butternut squash, we are gonna have to peel it so, as you can see, the peel on here, when I cut through it, it is going to be super, super easy to remove. And I might be able to, you could just scrape it. It is that tender. I can just scrape it with my tongs. So, if it's too hot for you to cut, and this is very warm after it's coming out of the Instant Pot, you could just scrape like this to get it off, and you'll see how easily that outer skin comes off. Or you can always just grab hold of it, and I'll grab it with the tongs to show you. And you can just slice it, and you can get those small little pieces of the skin. Now, can you eat the skin? Um, you can. I think there's lots of fiber in there. I've heard many people say before they'll just eat the whole thing. They're roasting it, including the skin. Um, it's probably okay in that method, but for this with the souffle, we do not want it because we don't want any of those firm pieces in there. We do want it all smooth, so we want all of the skin off. But again, like I said, if you were roasting it, eating it in halves, you could most definitely eat the skin too. It'd be kind of like if you think about eating an apple where there's most of the nutrients and fiber is in the skin. 
as with a lot of vegetables. I'm gonna move this over here. I can just kind of pop that skin over. So I'm gonna continue cutting and removing the skin from the outside and we'll be back in just a minute. All right, I do have my butternut squash completely peeled now. So, and as you can see in the bottom of it, we are getting still a little bit of liquid coming out. So every so often I'm just gonna drain out. I've just got a pie plate to the side. I'm gonna drain that liquid out because we don't want any of that excess water in our souffle. All right, now at this point, I'm gonna come in and you can put this in a blender. I'm gonna use my immersion blender and thanks to one of my fellow viewers that heard me say one time before that I was having trouble with my cords, I did get an extension cord, so this makes it much easier. Thank you. So I'm just gonna go in here and move this up. Love my immersion blender. That way I can always blend stuff up straight in the pot and I don't have to add a blender or another tool. And we want this a pretty much a smooth consistency. So I think I've achieved that. Now, this still is a little warm, so I'm gonna give this mixture with it um, pureed a rest just for a few minutes because like I said, when I feel it, the temperature is still a little warm. So before I add the next ingredients, I do want my butternut squash to cool down just a little bit so it won't kind of pre-cook them too fast. So let it cool down for just a few minutes. Then we're gonna add the rest of our ingredients. All right, now our butternut squash has cooled just a little bit. So we're gonna go ahead and add the remainder of our ingredients to continue with this souffle. So to this, we're gonna add one cup of packed brown sugar. I said packed, it didn't wanna come out. Then we are going to, I'm going to actually kind of even this out a little bit in there. We're going to add three eggs. I always crack your eggs in a different container and I'm going to go ahead and mix these up just a little bit. Three eggs. It's another reason we want our butternut squash to cool down because we don't want our eggs to scramble as soon as we put them into the mixture. That's not good. I'm gonna add a teaspoon of cinnamon. Now, if you like nutmeg, you can also add nutmeg to this. My family's just not a big fan of it, so we skipped the nutmeg, which is kind of um, originally the way that I would make it. But the last few times my family said, leave it out, they didn't like it. They liked just the ease of the cinnamon. So that's what I'm doing. All right, so I add half a teaspoon of salt there, and I'm gonna add a teaspoon of vanilla. just a little bit by hand to get it all started together. And then I'm gonna come back and grab my immersion blender again. And now this, um, the remainder of this with all the ingredients, you wanna be sure that it is completely pureed together. So I'm gonna come back in and And if you see a few lumps in there, just kind of pick your immersion blender up and put it directly on top of those, and it will blend those nicely. Kind of scraping the sides back down with it and run it around to be sure everything's in there. And when you're doing this, if you've never done one before, you can stick it straight down and hold it against the bottom of the pan. You can pick it up ever so lightly, tilt it, and it will pull more of um, whatever your mixture is in towards the blade. 
make sure you don't pull it up too high because if you do, it will splatter everywhere. So I'm kind of moving it around but still keeping my blade flat against my ball. larger pieces and I do not so we have a perfect mixture at this point so I'm going to kind of shake it off detach my blender shake it and put it over here to the side and then we are going to come and take a baking dish now my baking dish is about um, I think it's about two quart baking dish and mine is an oval that I'm going to use Make sure that you spray this. And this is stoneware that I'm using just because it has a better non-stick, but I still go ahead and spray them. So spray it very well. And then we are going to pour a mixture in. And again, be very careful with this because it is very liquidy at this point, and you don't want to end up wearing it. take this shake it out and put it into our oven at 350 degrees and it is going to bake um, about um, 50 to 60 minutes depending on your oven but what you want to do you want it to be able to kind of either you can do a sharp knife right in the center or a toothpick but you want it um, set kind of like a pie would be remember when you take it out of the oven it will continue to cook, so it may be just a little jiggly, but you don't want it runny and real loose in the center. So, let's get ready and put it in our oven. Here we go. Let's set my timer for 50 minutes. I'm just going off and it's been 50 minutes, so let's check our souffle. Ooh. Look at that. Perfect. See, it's a little loose, but it's perfectly set in the center. Mmm. Get it out and let it cool. We'll be ready to taste that wonderful souffle. I'm going to go ahead and turn my oven off and then let it sit here and cool. Listen to that sizzle. Isn't that pretty? I'm Stephanie, and this has been Steph Stowe. For today, we made a butternut squash souffle. We cracked that wonderful, wonderful fall vegetable and turned it into a wonderful side dish. I can't wait till this cool so we can dig right into it. I do hope you try this recipe. It is a little time consuming, and I know it is a little intimidating the first time you do it, but the payoff will be oh so worth it. So, remember, Steph Stowe, for we're making memories one dish at a time. Please be sure to give us a thumbs up, click that subscribe button so you can get more content like this. And again, I dearly thank you for watching and joining us as we continue on our journey of cooking and making lots of great memories one dish at a time. Enjoy. Good night.